12, verses 15, 16, and 18. I'll show up to give you, look at all this wrestler! So what happened to verse 17? Then the bush of We actually talked about it last week, about well, two weeks ago. And in the home. Uh, so we're going to continue and sometime in the near future we'll actually finish chapter 12. So, we've been in Romans for about two years and Within the next 10 years, at least, we'll finish uh, the, the rest of the book of Romans. Uh, so uh, sometime, in near, uh, that. sometime in the near future, we'll, we'll finish Romans. A couple weeks, actually, we'll finish No, not a couple weeks. A couple of So, a couple more months, yeah. Lord willing, we'll be finishing okay. the book of Romans. So, what are we going to do after we finish Romans? אתם יודעים, זה אחד הדילמות הכי גדולות של רועי קהילה, או של קהילה. So this is one of the biggest dilemmas that a pastor has in a congregation. מה ללמד אחר כך? What do you teach after you're done with the series? זה אחד מהדברים של ללכת על המים. תחכה לאלוהים שישלח לך חפץ. So it's one of those things that's kind of like walking on water, and sometimes you feel like you're waiting in front of the fact for God to send you a fact. ותמיד, כבר 23 שנים שהקהילה הזו חיה, תמיד לפני סיום ספר, עלו בעיות, היו עניינים, היו כל מיני דברים שגרמו לך להבין שהנושא המרכזי זה שם של ספר או שם של נושא. So in the past 23 years that this uh, congregation has been in existence, there's always been some, something going on in the, in the church that has helped us to figure out what to teach next, either a book or a particular uh, topic. ובעזרת השם, אחרי אל הרומים ניקח מספר שבועות של התא המשפחתי וייעוץ נישואין. So a word way after we finish the book of Romans, we're going to take several weeks to examine the topic of the family unit and counseling for uh, uh, marriage. אז חלק מהצעירים יגידו, או, עכשיו חודשיים אנחנו באים לשמוע שטויות, או... So some of the young folks are maybe thinking, oh, no, for the next several months we're going to hear Sorry, teaching. No. Statistic. Statistic. Statistically. עשרים, לפחות עשרים אנשים פה, זוגות, יתגרשו במהלך החיים. כדאי לכל אחד לבוא וללמוד. Statistically, about 20% of the people sitting in this room will not actually complete their marriage with the spouse that they're at now, they're with now. Wow, the problem is not huh? So that's not quite so funny. ולכן, במקום כל פעם לבוא ולשבת עם זוגות כאשר הרכבת כבר יצאה מהתחנה, אנחנו נעשה את זה פעם בכמה שנים כתחזוקה מונעת. So we've decided that instead of waiting for the train to leave the station, We'll, we'll work on the train even before it leaves the, leaves the station. So every, every several years or when we feel the need, we'll, we'll do some preventative teaching, as it were, and, and teach about the family unit, about how couples can get along, resolve differences before problems arise. So if you're single, תודה לה על תלמד איך לוודא שהנישואים שלך יסתיימו ביחד בפנסיה וזקנה. בסדר. תאמיני, אני מחייך, אבל בפנים הלב בוכה, כי ישנם כמה זוגות שבשבילהם זה כבר כל כמה שמתפרץ. אז תודה לאל. אנחנו באל הרומי פרק 12, ותזכרו, מה איך התחיל הפרק הזה? So let's just think back for a second. How did Romans chapter 12 begin? Le'or rechamei Elohim shemaporatim b'trakim 1 ad 11 
תקריבו עצמכם, הציגו עצמכם כקורבן חי מושלם ורצוי לפני אלוהים. which he's actually talked about for the previous 11 chapters. So in light of all those 11 chapters, therefore offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your spiritual act of worship. And Paul doesn't leave us guilty. He then goes on to explain what does it mean to offer your body as a spiritual sacrifice. He explains it down to the fine details. That's in the rest of chapter 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16. So in verses 1 to 9 of Romans chapter 12, Paul says that every one of us should serve God according to the gift that he's given to us. And in the rest of chapter 12, Paul actually talks about how even though we have different gifts, individuals have been given different spiritual gifts, we all have, should look the same. We all have the same characteristics, which are the fruit of the Spirit. So verses 10 through 21 speak about how to serve the Lord in a manner that displays the fruit of the Spirit in your life. So this morning we'll focus on 15 through 18, but we've already spoke about 17, so we won't focus on that one this morning. ואל תיבדלו מאנשים פשוטים, אל תהיו חכמים בעיניכם, אל תשלמו לאיש רעה תחת רעה, בקשו את הטוב בעיני כל בני אדם. עד כמה שהדבר בידכם, חיו בשלום עם כל אדם. אוקיי, רומנס צ'אפט 12, 15 through 18. but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Oh, it's not easy. Not so simple. Not so simple. Not so simple. Because a lot of these things are not always dependent on us. So what do we do with the other side is hard to de- get along with. Well, at the very least, you do the Lord's will. Like as a parent, you go into your child's room and the, the kids are, are arguing, he did this, and the other kid says, no, he did that. And they're arguing, you're trying to make sense of, of who is, is guilty, and you come to the oldest one and you say, at the very least, just be wise, act like you're the older brother. But the question of the is to And that's how it is here. Yalla bye. <laughs> so basically what Paul is saying, and we could close the Bible and leave because this is the point of the, of the message, Paul basically is saying, be wise, act in a godly manner. So he says in verse 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Okay, let's first learn what rejoicing is not, or mourning is not. So somebody comes to me and he says, hey, guess what? I stole a, a Jaguar. Got a perfect $100,000 Jaguar. Isn't that great? So should you rejoice with that individual? Of course not. Because God never tells us to rejoice 
with those who are committing sin. Right? We don't rejoice over sin. The contrary. Right? Instead of rejoicing with somebody who is right, uh, knowingly sinful, you should actually inform, tell the individual what he's done wrong so that that individual doesn't think that what he's done is right in the eyes of the Lord. Okay. I put a big Jesus sign on my head. Oy vey. In Hebrew, in Hebrew you can say oy gevach. The, the idea is, oh no. Chavre. Lismoch bedvarim shomdim bekav echad in tzidkat elohim. What's the principle? The principle is we need to rejoice with things that are biblical. We rejoice with those who are acting in a correct manner, who are living righteously. So if you see somebody who is living in a godly manner, he's, he's really bearing out the fruit of the Spirit in his life, and you see how God blessed him for his godly living, that's the kind of in- individual you should be rejoicing with. Or you see another family, they also, same thing, they're, they're following the Lord, they're studying God's Word, they're really doing everything they can for the Lord, and you see how God blesses them. Those are the kind of people we should be rejoicing with, and we shouldn't be jealous of God's blessing on their lives. Or we could take another example. It's, there's another family, let's say, that is also loving the Lord, doing all they can for Him, and their ch- they, you see God's blessing in their family. You see how their children are succeeding in what they do. And you look at your, your family, your children maybe aren't succeeding quite as, as you would like them to. What should be our approach? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Don't be jealous of them. Rather, be joyful uh, with that, the blessing of God in their life. Now, of course, you can pray to God and you can ask the Lord to bless your family as well, that He would help your children, that He would help the rest of the members of your family to grow, to be successful. There's nothing wrong with that. But if, if, you, if your heart aches because you see that your brother is successful and that God has blessed him, then you're, you're being partners with Satan. You're not rejoicing with those who rejoice. That's not love. That's actually hate. When you rejoice with somebody who is rejoicing without being jealous of them, that's actually true love. So what, what is love? Well, what does it mean to love somebody? It means to give to somebody. It's not taking from somebody, it's giving. So if your brother comes to you and he says, Wow, look how God has blessed my family. Look how he's blessed my wife, my household, everything that I've done, my work. You should rejoice with that individual, not be jealous of him should be joyful because God has blessed your brother that's what true love is 
שאין באמת אהבה טובה שכזו, אם יום אחד האח ירצה עזרה, אתה לא תמהר לעזור. אתה תהיה יותר מהיר לשים מקל בגלגל מאשר עוד דלק במכל. When that brother one day is in need, it's going to be hard for you to help him. It's going to be hard for you to lend a helping hand to somebody that you don't truly love, but that you're always jealous of. So may our heart be filled with joy when we hear about our brothers and sisters being blessed by the Lord. May we rejoice with them as Paul says and not be jealous of them. So if we want to know what true love really is, the best place to go is, is to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And if you read uh, several verses in 1 Corinthians 13, you'll see that Paul defines, or one of the ways that Paul defines love is he says love does not is not jealous it does not envy you see wow well, there's a couple in the, the church they, they have a great relationship and it hurts me why well, don't I have that you're jealous of them is that true love no your approach your attitude rather should be You should rejoice that God has left them, that, that life is going well for them. And if you don't have that, אלוהים, גם אני רוצה את הברכה הזו. איזה חטא יש לי? איזה משהו באופי שלי מנוע את הברכה הזו? זה חוקי, זה בסדר. If your relationship with your spouse is not nice, or it's not uh, blessed like your brother's and, and sister's relationship is, then perhaps you should look in the mirror and you say, well, am I doing something that is causing disharmony in our relationship? Am I perhaps guilty of sinning in a particular way? You should examine yourself And not be jealous of their joy in a, in a, a bad way. Say, I don't want them to have it. I want it. You should be thankful that things are going well for them. Pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to help you to manage your household in a correct and, and right way. So let me just say it as it is. אלוהים עד, עד כמה אני רוצה שכל הזוגות הנישואים יהיה להם פה נישואים אידיאליים. God is my witness. He knows that I want... everybody to have an ideal uh, marriage. The reason is, when everybody has a perfect marriage, then I don't have any problem as the pastor. But seriously, the, the first priority is so that God gets the glory. So listen carefully. נישואים בריאים על פי רצון אלוהים זה חלק מהשתחוויה. השתחוויה זה לא רק לבוא ולזמר פה ולשיר, השתחוויה זה חיים על פי רצון אלוהים מתוך אמונה ואהבה. The truth is that a healthy marriage is actually part of worship. A worship is not just singing and playing. Worship is, is a life that is given over to the Lord. And when we have healthy family relationships, healthy relationships amongst, uh, amongst our spouses, then we truly worship the Lord in the way that we live. And when we as a husband and a wife are not pursuing peace, Not only are we not worshiping the Lord, but we're also being an obstacle for our children. Because they see that there's disharmony amongst our relationships. They see that we're not living in the way that God wants us to live, and, and they see that as, as hypocrisy. And so, in a sense, we are contributing to their uh, 
obstacle or to their difficulty in living out the Christian life. And I've done all of my say, well, I invest all of my energy into my own family relationship. I don't have any more energy to expend in order to help others have a better relationship. But we should remember that we all are accountable one to another as the body of Christ. לקבלת ספרון מידע ללא תשלום, 